Good afternoon and welcome to my Wednesday Facebook Live in the Bold and Successful Women's Facebook group. And today we're going to talk about one of the biggest issues I find with a lot of clients is how to grow your audience quickly. Such an important part of it. For those who don't know me, my name is Heather Cameron of IgniteYourMarket.com and my passion is to help women create their client getting system so they can turn strangers into paying clients with ease and bring in and create the lifestyle that you so deserve as a woman's business owner. So just give me a sec. I want to make sure that I'm actually live and that I can see your comments. Um, Facebook loves to put me live in multiple places. So if you're joining me live, say hi. If you're listening to the replay, let me know. I'm just gonna mute my computer and see if I can pick up all the comments in all the different places they tend to show up. So I wanna talk about how to grow your audience. Now, if you're listening live, is audience growth some of the things that you need to do? And the reason that I've chosen this topic is I did a, um, masterclass last week and one of the questions I asked I outlined five things that are key to your business success and the second one was audience and that was when I asked what's the five things that you what of the sorry when I asked what was the thing that you needed to work on out of the five audience growth was number one from everybody who was on it and that, that's the same answer I've had before when I've asked that question so give me one sec I'm just pulling up on my lives um so if you don't have a big enough audience, you can have the best, the most awesome product or service, and you're going to outsell your audience really quickly, right? Let's say you have an audience of 100 people or 200 people or three, four, 500 people, right? Um, eventually, you're going to have gone to the well and there's not going to be anybody left in the well who wants to buy from you. We need to refresh our audience. We need to refresh the people that have it. It doesn't mean that people on your list or in your Facebook group that have been there for a long time aren't going to come and buy from you later on. Definitely we all buy when we're ready to buy, but we still need to keep watering. We need to stay, keep growing our audience. But there's two different things between I've got a healthy audience and I'm just going to continue with growth strategies or my audience is really, really tiny. And so I'm not seeing the results I want because I have a tiny audience. Now you can have a medium sized audience that's extremely responsive. And those are that's the sweet spot we all want to be. And we don't need to have huge, crazy big audience You've got to find the size that makes sense for you, but we all need to do audience growth. So if you are listening live or listening to the replay, think about where you're at. Um, let me know um, if you can put it in the comments. Do you have a small audience? Do you have a medium audience? Do you have a large audience? And I'm going to let you define what that is. What is small audience? What is medium audience? What is large audience? And then about how are you going to make that audience grow? Right. And, you know, and what type of audience do you want to grow is another important question of it. But how are you going to grow your audience? And it doesn't matter what you're selling. This is true no matter what we do. Right. We need to continue to have fresh faces. Otherwise, it's difficult to continue to sell the same thing to people over and over and over again. They get tired of it. You know, as somebody who runs a list, I am always curious about who unsubscribes. And there is a portion of people on my list who unsubscribe because they've been there for four or five years and they just don't want to hear the message anymore. It's not relevant to them. So we've always got to bring in flesh blood to our audience. So thank you, Jacqueline, for being here. Really appreciate it. Miss seeing your beautiful face. One of these days we'll get to see people, not in the next four weeks, but one of these days we'll get to see people face to face again. Um, but I wanted to talk about the ways to grow your audience. So the first one and the most important one that seems um, often seems to be forgotten is you got to show up. If you want to grow your audience, you need to show up to do it. And it sounds obvious, but you need to commit to doing it every single day. So if you want to grow your audience, which will help you grow your sales, which will help you create the success that you want, you really have to show up every single work day. It doesn't have to be every day, but scheduling tools can help you do it every day, but you've got to show up every single work day in on the platform that you so choose to do it. I don't recommend trying to grow your audience on five platforms at once. And what I mean by platforms is you've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Those are kind of the big ones. Clubhouse. Those are the big ones, right? You don't want to try and be on all of them. It just doesn't work. It's spreading yourself too thin. So you need to commit to where you want to grow your audience, how you want to do it, and then do it every single day and do it in the most effective way. So you're not spending hours a day doing this, but if you're spending, you know, three 20 minute slots focused on growing your audience, 
then you're going to see results, right? And I'm going to talk about ways to do that. But if you spend three 20 minute spots a day, right? So an hour a day growing your audience, what could that do to your business? And I'm also going to talk about ways to exponentially grow your audience because you can do that as well. So there's the small growth and then committing to showing up every single day to grow your audience, um, doing that with free offers, doing that with inviting people to your group. If you have a group doing that with just promoting what you do. So just being present at least, you know, every single day for at least a half an hour, but pick your time frame and be committed to doing it. That's going to be the number one way that you're always going to be working at growing your audience. You have to be committed. It has to be one of your goals. It's not going to happen if it's not your goals, you know, and I can think of a number of people I've spoken to over the last couple of weeks where audience growth isn't their goal. And then they're wondering why their business isn't growing because they're not growing their audience. So it needs to be one of your top goals. If you want to sell more, you need a bigger audience. Pretty, pretty, um, connected. So the next one, and if you're live, let me know if you have any questions, if you're on the replay, hashtag replay, what is key for you to grow your audience? Which one resonates the most with you? Are you showing up every day to grow your audience? That would be, you know, if you walk away from this live, that one question to be really honest with yourself. Yes, I'm showing up every day to grow my audience or no, I'm not. And really think about how much do you want to show up? If it can't be every day, if that's just overwhelming for you, then are you showing up 50% of the time to grow your audience? What are you doing um, purposefully to grow your audience? So that's number one. Number two is leveraging Facebook groups. So it's, you know, I, I don't even want to know how many Facebook groups I'm a member of. I wish Facebook made it a lot easier to figure out. But I do have my top groups that I participate in. So when I talk about leveraging Facebook groups, and I'm kind of zoning in on Facebook right now because that's the one I know the best. Um, and we'll talk about the other platforms a bit. But leveraging Facebook groups is twofold. It's leveraging your own group if you run your own group. And basically your own group is just, it's an offshoot of your list. It's an offshoot of your audience. And then the other part is leveraging other people's groups. So when you're leveraging your own group, if you have your own group, you need to be active in the group. You need to be really studying the engagement because Facebook has an algorithm and it rewards groups that are active. It rewards groups where people are creating conversations. Um, it rewards things where people are interacting with each other. So you want to create that buzz in your own group because that's going to help you, but it's also going to help everybody in your group. So it's a win-win for everybody if you have an active group. So there's ways to leverage your own group, but I want to talk about leveraging other people's groups as well, because we're trying to grow our audience. We're trying to pull people into our Facebook group, pull people into our list. So how you can leverage other people's groups is to be a contributor, because what's going to happen, let's say you're in a group of 5,000 people, and it doesn't matter whether it's your local neighborhood group or it's a big woman entrepreneur group. Let's say you're in a group of 5,000, there's groups of 20,000, there's groups of 100,000 out there, and there's groups of 300, right? It doesn't matter the size of the group. If you go in and post content in a group like that and you're just posting a post or you're going in and promoting once a week, um, Facebook isn't going to look at you as a contributor. So it's not going to show your post to everybody. And that's the key part. You know, think about your own newsfeed. The posts that show up in your newsfeed are the ones where the groups where you go in the most, you interact the most, you're there the most. Well, you have to play that algorithm for people. So the trick to it is, is choose the groups that have the best of your audience. Commit to four or five uh, groups that you will go in every day and contribute. So you will read other people's posts and you'll make a comment. You'll give them feedback. You'll um, create a conversation. Because what happens is if you do that, and then you go both post a post about promoting your product or service because you're allowed to do that. So for example, in my group, you can promote on Thursdays. If you've been in all week making comments and then you do a promotion, your post is going to go to the top and it's going to stay at the top because people don't see the feed in relevance. They see the feed in the rewarding you. Not only is it going to stay at the top of the group, it's going to appear in other people's news feeds. So people who are active in the group are going to see it in their news feed, right? If you just come in once a week and drop your link, people aren't going to see it in the news feed. They're not going to get, you're not going to re get rewarded for your behavior. So if you can find a handful of groups who are your ideal clients and participate in those groups, 
you know, be interactive, be a contributor, then you are going to be seen by other people and then invite them, whether you're allowed to promote on days that you're allowed to promote, whether you're allowed to promote all the time, whether it's a promotion thread, um, whether you have an opportunity to engage in a conversation and then pull them off of that conversation into a direct messaging and through direct messaging, invite them into your, into your audience. Um, that's how you're going to grow your audience using Facebook groups. And you can do it amazingly quickly if you play the game right. So for example, with two posts, I added a hundred and 200 people to my list in with two posts. So I shared two posts in other groups. I used the right wording. I was active in the group. I studied what the best time of day was to do it. And it was a really, really simple post because I was pulling people from these groups into my group, right? And every time I do this, and I'm going to do it again in the next couple of days, I'm really strategic about trying to word it so that I'm pulling in the people that I want for my group. But just two posts pulled in 200 people to my group. So it's about being strategic. It's about thinking about not just posting, but really thinking about what the path that you want people to take. You can grow your group rapidly using Facebook. You can do it. You can grow your list rapidly by doing Facebook. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. And it doesn't matter if your product or services, right? You can think about it. Let's say you're doing, um, let's say you make jewelry. Let's say you make beautiful, unique pieces. And I know a woman who rocks social media and she's a jewelry maker with her daughter and they absolutely rock social media with it. And what they do is they actually show you how to wear the jewelry. They show you how to um, match colors in your wardrobe. They show you how to change colors and use it for different seasons. Um, she picks different themes. So it's very dynamic and interesting content that she shares and it's useful. So then people see, they're curious, and she uses her own jewelry as part of the scheme, but it's never, it's not the, it's not the blaring focus. So she teaches people how to use jewelry, how to wear it, how to stand out, how to match colors, how to look good, and this kind of thing. And it makes you go look at her content, and she sells really well off of social media because she does that. So it's not just about what you sell, it's about the experience around what you sell. It's about creating that experience. And then she shares that in other people's groups and she's done really well. She does extremely well on Instagram using the same content. I don't know if she's gone further than that. Um, a great place for her would be Pinterest. And I think she does Pinterest as well. But she shares the story and the experience without selling her product. And that's key, right? She's saying, well, it's April and the colors are getting brighter. And here's the color schemes or here's the colors for this year. Do you like them or don't you like them? Right? Simple question. She's just kind of spotlighting her stuff and it draws people to her information and she builds a group that way. So that's how you can leverage Facebook groups to grow your audience. Does that make sense? If you're online, I know there's somebody there. Um, if you're listening to the replay, let me know if that makes sense, right? So you can leverage Facebook groups and you can use this same theory on Instagram, it's about sharing and showing up and consistent com content. Um, Pinterest, you could put pins and use pins and draw people. I mean, Pinterest is a different concept because you want to pin information, draw them to a place and then share the information in that place. It's similar, but you have to know how it works. So how does it work on LinkedIn? The point is, is in all these cases, you want to go in, you don't want to go on LinkedIn and start selling right away. You don't want to go anywhere and start selling right away. On Instagram, you can highlight your products and on Pinterest, you can definitely highlight your products. But on the other platforms, you're building relationships first. So that's how you can leverage Facebook groups to grow your list. And if you want to know more about that, let me know. Um, another awesome way to grow your list is to be a guest. So there are so many opportunities to be a guest and it doesn't matter if you're product-based or service-based, you have expertise and a story to tell. Right. So think about what is your story that you can share? You know, it could be how you developed your business. It could be what benefits and why women or men would look for your products and services. It could be the story of how you move from a corporate job to a non-corporate job. It could be something that happened in your life. There's lots of ways to share really good stories and there are tons of opportunities to be a guest. Right. So you can be a guest on a podcast. That's that's one. You can go out and hunt podcasts. I was actually reading a post from somebody yesterday. Oh, thank you, Tracy. I love you too. Um, 
you can be a guest on a podcast. So you, you can go out and I was reading somebody's post yesterday. They've decided they want to be a guest on 25 podcasts this year. They've already booked 10 of them right? Because they purposely decided that was the way they want to grow their audience. So they book 10 of them. And the joy of being a podcast guest is that you can usually offer a freebie at the end of it, which then brings people onto your list. You can invite them into your world. So 90% of the podcasts give you a chance to say, how can our listeners connect with you? Right? Not all of them do. And you need to understand that. But with the goal of being on 10 pod, 25 podcasts, she's already 10 in. Um, she'll probably hit 25 with the way that she's doing it by the end of the summer. It doesn't mean they'll go live. You don't control when podcasts go live. But another place to be a guest is in other people's groups, right? I'm here live every week. Um, I have actually done guest series in my groups. So I've built up, and you can do this in your own group as a way to grow people as well, but I've built up by inviting people to be guests in my group to talk to people. Um, summits, people who run summits are always looking for guests. So, you know, keep your eye open for opportunities to speak. There's a lot of them. I'm about to, I'm booked to be a guest on a podcast um, in May. I don't know when the podcast will air because we don't know that till after that's done. Um, I found that in the link in a group. Somebody was saying, to, what topic would you like to talk about? And they invited me to be on their podcast. I didn't have to work. I had a one line answer that got me a yes, I would like you on my podcast. Here, go fill out the form. At that point, I had to work. I had to put a proposal to what we would talk about. But I didn't have to work hard. So the opportunities are there. So be a guest is a great way to um, build your list. Another one is to be a guest on a giveaway. So a giveaway is usually somebody looking for a bunch of experts who have a similar theme and you all give something of value for free, typically for free. There are paid giveaways, but typically for free and you all build off of each other and you're all coming from that common pool of whatever the topic of the giveaway is tends to draw in the people who are your ideal audience. And that's another great way. I did a giveaway with Robin Smith, who's in this group. I did a giveaway with her in April, sorry, March for International Women's Day. I added 100 people to my list. I didn't have to do anything. I had the product. I had the service. I just had to write two emails and promote it and do a couple social media posts. And I added 100 some odd people to my list. Robin added 400 some odd people to her list, right? So you can grow your list by doing these things. So being a guest is a really powerful way to grow your list. Um, another powerful way to grow your list is to host an event. So hosting an event can be kind of the opposite of what I just said. If you have a Facebook group, you could decide that you were going to host a guest speaking event. And your guest speaking event could be, um, maybe you're going to do a speaker a day for five days or a speaker a day for 10 days or a speaker a day for a month. And when you do that to grow your group, you want to make sure the speakers are bringing people in. So kind of one of those, Hey, you can come to my group. You can meet all these people, but you need to invite your people to the group, right? So that can be a simple way to do it where you're doing a mini speaking series in your group. You don't want to do it on your Facebook page. You don't want to do it on your profile because you're not pulling people in right? You want them in your group or on your email list. You want them to be part of your community. So the simplest one is to do that kind of guest speaking series. That's a first step. Another way that you can grow your audience is to run a challenge. So I've done lots of challenges. People have been involved in the challenges. Um, you can run a challenge to grow your list. Um, and a challenge is an event. Basically, it's an event for a number of days. You're, it can be two days. It can be five days. It can be a boot camp. But the, the intent is, is that you're sharing information and you're putting them through an experience and you can make an offer. You should make an offer at the end of your event, but you're pulling people into your group and you're going to build your audience that way. That is a fast way to bring people into your group who are interested in the topic that you've chosen. Now you could build another group, but you're still going to get them on your email list by doing that, right? So that's a fast way to do that, to get them on your email list. Another way is to do a giveaway. So kind of I talked about Robin's giveaway. You can do a giveaway event. I have a client who's going through that right now. So she needs to grow her list. She has an amazing product, but she's selling to the tiny, tiny group that she has. She's not getting sales because she's already over oversold to her group. Her group is really small. Her email list is really small. She's already oversold to them. So the thing that she needs to do is to do a big event to grow. So she's going to do a giveaway. 
And basically what a giveaway is picking a topic, inviting other people, leveraging their audience. Everybody who joins the giveaway, you get their email address. So you're going to get a big hit of a, a list build. They get to pick and choose the products and services, the products or offers that are in the giveaway. The giveaway participants build their list by whoever picks their offer. So the idea is free. I mean, I, like I said, I've been in paid giveaways and usually with paid giveaways, the products are a bit more meaty, but if it's a free giveaway, they're just something unique that they can't get elsewhere. And so they go in and they shop. That can be a really great list build with not a lot of effort. You need to find the speakers. You need two pages on a website. It's as simple as that. You need a page to register, a page for people to download their giveaways. And then you build your list. And all of a sudden you can engage and plan what you're going to do after that. That's an a kind of bigger step up from doing guest speakers in your group, from doing... Um, a challenge, the next kind of step up is a giveaway. You'll get a lot of people. It's a great list build activity to do. And then the big, big list build is a summit. Um, and a summit is something I love. I taught a summit course in January, in December, right? Summits at Sizzle. But a summit is that next big step up. And what a summit is, is similar to a giveaway, except that it's going to be a interactive typically it doesn't have to be live it can be pre-recorded but it's a training session where people are talking like i'm doing right now so it could be interview based or it could be presenting based there's a theme to the topic usually there's several speakers a day and then you can buy the recordings because it's meaty content that you're not going to get elsewhere usually it runs for you know anywhere from three days to i ran a summit for 14 days i wouldn't do it that long again lesson learned, but still the process is the same. And at the end of the summit, you have a lot more people on your list. And through that list, you can build and make an offer. You can make an offer as part of the summit. Um, I made really good profits off of just selling my recordings, but then you can also upsell your list at the end of that. So that's a really big list build, audience build. And like I said earlier, the reason that I came up with this topic was because that's the number one thing that I hear from a lot of people. My audience is too small, right? I'm overselling to the same people. I'm not getting traction. I'm not getting sales. So if your audience is too small, you need to build your audience. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to mispronounce your name. These are very useful tips. They are useful tips. So how do you want to build your audience, right? So one is show up, show up, that's going to be number one. Show up, share your freebies, share what's going up there, show up and give the information out. Number two is leverage groups in Facebook. Really, but commit to three or four groups. Commit to being the participant in your groups. That's going to really help you grow your group, right? So pick four or five groups, be there, contribute. Another trick about Facebook groups, by the way, for anybody who wants to leverage it, is if you're going to post something in a Facebook group that allows you to promote or allows you to show your expertise, go in the group, comment on several other people's posts, wait a little bit, and then post your content. That way, Facebook's going to bump you up to the top. If you just go in once a week and drop a post, you're just going to fall down the barrel, right? It's not going to be seen by anybody because there's no interaction, right? And I don't know if you've ever noticed in Facebook, there's badges, right? So people who have um, visual poster, um, conversational starter, um, I don't remember what they all are. All of those badges, Facebook's telling you they're rewarding you. They're saying, hey, by the way, you're in this group, you're being a conversation starter. So when you post, I'm going to bump your stuff up, right? So there are some strategies to leveraging other people's groups to build your audience. And that's one of them. You need to be active in the group. You need to post in that way, and then you're going to get better results from that. And then you can actually invite people from these groups to your own group, follow their rules. Um, and that's how you're going to build your group. And that's how you're going to make sales, right? So number one is build your audience. And to build your audience, you have to be seen. And to be seen in Facebook, you've got to play the algorithm. And the algorithm rewards contribution. It rewards conversation. So here's something I learned recently. Um, if you post something in Facebook and somebody answers it, like so, so you post something, somebody puts a comment in there, you comment on the comment. If somebody different comes in and comments on the comment, then you've created a conversation. And Facebook is going to give that entire post a lot more visibility than just a post where you're answering back. 
because they are encouraging conversations. They're encouraging engagements. So that's kind of where you want your goal to be on that frequently being in there. So pick four or five groups and be a contributor. Be there every single day, commenting on other people, posting and sharing. Um, that way you're going to show up in more people's audience is, is more people's feeds, more people's audience. They're going to then look at you. They're going to reach out to you either through direct email, sorry, direct message. Make sure your breadcrumbs are working. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a video in here about it. Make sure when somebody lands on your public profile, they know what to do next. Make sure they can find you. They can download your freebie. They can become part of your Facebook group. So make it easy for people, but that's how you would leverage Facebook groups. Be a guest on other things. So go out and be a guest. You know, um, somebody, I was on a call earlier today and somebody was saying um, how to help introverts be a guest. And I'm going to tell you as an extrovert, it's not any easier for an extrovert than it is an introvert. That's a real misconception. It's about confidence. You know, some of the best speakers I know are introverts, right? Some of the best presenters, some of the people who are putting themselves out there every single day are introverts because they're confident in their message and they're confident that they can help people, right? And their passion is to do those two. The fact that they're introverts isn't, isn't relevant. Um, so think about being a guest, right? Think about you all have amazing stories to tell. You all have amazing expertise. It doesn't matter if you're a product or service. There is guest opportunities out there for you if you're open for them. And those are great audience builds that you don't have to do much work for. Like the podcast I mentioned, I'm going to be, it'll take, it'll be a half an hour of my time to be interviewed on this podcast. And then I have to promote it when it goes live. It's very little work for me. And I'm being invited to talk about my passion, right? So win-win, right? Podcasts are awesome ways. You have to do a little bit of work to find them or keep your eyes open. It's kind of like keep your antennas up and look for opportunities to speak on podcasts or summits. Um, those are great, great ways to grow your audience. And then hosting your own event. That's the big list build. If you want that big, big list build, host your own event, host your own giveaway, host your own summit, host your own speaker series in your group. All of those will exponentially grow your group. So do a summit, do a speaker guest, do a giveaway or do a challenge or do even like a masterclass, right? A one-time event, all of those things when you promote them in other groups and you have enough promotion times are going to be the things that are going to build your groups that are going to build your audience, right? So you can go from nothing to a huge audience intentionally very quickly. Um, but it has to be a goal. And I think that's when I, when people are saying that they're one of the things they need to work on is audience growth. What I see is they actually don't have a goal. They're like, they, they have a goal for, I want to make 10 K or five K or two K a month, but they've never thought it down to one of the things I need to do to do that is I need to grow my audience. I need to understand my numbers. I need to purposely grow my audience and growing my audience needs to be one of my top goals. And I need to be working on that goal every single day that I'm working, right? I need to, I need to make that say today, what did I do to grow my audience? It's kind of like today, what did I do to make a sale? So every day you should be selling and growing your audience is a key component about making sales. Does that make sense for those of you who are live? I appreciate you so much for being live and for those who have stopped by. Um, but really strategically think about how you can grow your audience. There are more ways than this. I am by no means a LinkedIn expert. I would like to get better at LinkedIn. Um, I understand how you can grow an audience on Pinterest and Pinterest is great if you use Pinterest to grow your audience because Pinterest lasts so long. Um, Instagram, I don't, I'm not on Clubhouse because I don't have an Apple phone, um, but I know people are having success, success growing their audience on Clubhouse. So it's about being strategic. It's about making it a priority for your business to grow your audience. That's what's going to get you the results that you want. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Um, lots of stuff in there. If anybody wants me to go deeper on any of these particular ideas, I can do that in another live. Um, but it's such an important part of your business success. The other thing is you always have to be growing your audience. From my own experience, um, if you're not growing your audience, your audience is going to shrink. So I want you to think about that one for a sec. If you're not growing your audience, your audience is going to shrink because there's just natural attrition. There's natural changes in people's circumstances. There's natural things that happen. So if we're not focused on growth, we're almost guaranteed that our audience is going to shrink. 
Um, and if we're not managing it and considering it a really good asset, our audience is going to shrink. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, I have people unsubscribe from my list every single day and I always go to them like, oh, you've been on my list for five years and today you decided to unsubscribe. Sometimes people unsubscribe from my list who have just gotten on my list. We don't control that. People leave my Facebook group. There are two people left my Facebook group today. I don't know why, right? So if we're not focused on growth, it will shrink. And as our audience shrinks, we're going to make less sales because we're selling to the same people over and over again. And they either have, we've already outsold them or it's going to take a long time before the buyer, they're never going to buy from us, right? So always think about audience growth as being one of your top priorities. So thank you very much. If you'd like to chat about audience growth, if you want to talk about how you can implement any of these strategies in your business, just let me know, private message me, just, um, Put a comment in more and I'll reach out to you and private message you. There are just so many options about it and I love helping people grow their audience. So have a great day and we will be back next week for our Wednesday Facebook Live at 3 p.m. Thanks. Bye.